Hello and welcome to another step-by-step -step how to tie tutorial video. This is what I'm calling the furnace. This is based off a plate of flies titled sea trout flies. Uh, looking at that, got a little inspired and decided to come up with this. This is tied on a size 10 moonlit 054 1x strong 2x long barbless hook. Nice little streamer hook there. For a tying thread, I'm using a Danville's 140 Denier Waxed Flymasters Plus Black. Starting at the very, very far end on the left, underneath it all, we have a little bit of 14 knot red thread for our butt section. Directly above that, we have some golden pheasant tips for our tail. Our main body is going to consist of some fibers of a Ozark Turkey Maringer Brown. A lot of beautiful color in that. Our underwing is a roe deer hair from Norway. And we have a collar of a mottled kind of orange brown, a hen hackle. Holding all that body material down, we have, of course, a gold ribbing. This is a French tinsel, a medium oval. And that is it. So let's go ahead and remove our sample and we can secure our blank hook in the vise. And we'll start with that red tag butt section there. So we'll take our tying thread in. And the reason why I went with the 14 odd is because it doesn't take much to lay flat and it doesn't build up hardly any bulk. So we're just going to take this down into the bend of the hook. Real simple. This is just kind of a little added surprise underneath that tail which we're going to tie in next. So keeping it nice and even We'll even walk our thread all the way up front where we can just tie that off with a whip finish. One, two, three. Nice little thin 14 knot. It did its job there at the back end. And we can set that off to the side. Now we'll cast on our actual tying thread. This is that 140 Denier Black Flymasters Plus waxed thread. I like the wax thread because it really helps hold material down, really grips and binds. It can clog up your bobbin from time to time if you're not careful. We'll take our thread to the bend where we will tie in our tail section. So for that again we have some golden pheasant tips and we'll just Trim off our desired section, holding it by the tips, we'll slip that away. And I like to try to fold the material over. We'll line up the first bar with the end of the hook right at the tip of the bend, or the apex of the bend. Here we go. And we'll secure this down, running at the full length of the hook. Helping us keep a nice even body material, or nice even body. Alright, let's go ahead and trim off our excess. At this point we can grab our oval gold tinsel. We're going to tie that in up here from the front to the rear. Again, this is going to help yield a nice even body getting all that material be a little bit thicker but the end result is just fantastic all right next we're gonna basically do the same thing with our ozark turkey i'm just gonna hold it hold it in place and trim off i don't know maybe quarter inch or so Strip that all back. We have this nice modeled top side. We have the underneath side. And we're going to tie this in by the tips with the top side of the feather in towards the shank of the hook. 
because when we go to Palmer it forward, it will flip and rotate, and it will leave us with the working side, the pretty side of that feather out. Alright, we'll just kind of tie into the tip of that turkey feather. Let that disappear and park our thread. At this point we can come forward with our body material, this nice turkey. Easy does it around the tip of the hook. And we can start take touching, if not slightly overlapping wraps forward with our turkey material. A lot of people have a turkey feather hanging around in their, in their closet, in their fly tying bin. And this is a great pattern for it. Whether it's dyed orange and mottled and this or that. A couple locking wraps, securing our feather down. And we can trim off our excess nice and close. And at this point, we can bring our ribbing forward. We do one full wrap over the tail behind the turkey feather. Now we can start our ribbing forward. And take this all as counter wraps, making sure we lay that down nice and flat. Nice, evenly open spaced ribbing, working our way from the rear to the front. Once we get to our thread, we'll stop there, hold that up, and lock down the ribbing. A couple tight locking wraps. And trim off our excess. Looking good so far. Alright, let's go ahead and take our roe deer hair. I'm just going to take a small little section. This must have been where the deer was taken. Small little section of deer hair. Trim it nice and close to the hide. And we'll go ahead and clean this out real quick. And if you have one handy, come at it with a brush. No matter how fine that hair is, you can always clean it up a little bit. All right, we're going to run our hair through our hair stacker. Let's go ahead and tips down, and we'll line up the, the tips as best as we can. All right. Let's go ahead and line up the tips about midway through that tail. That's where we're going to line that up at. And to keep it on the top side, I'm going to take one wrap around just the hair. And then the next wrap I'll take around the hair and the shank of the hook. And this will help lock that and on the top side, nice tight locking wraps. Excellent. We'll give ourselves a nice clean cut up front. This will help us with our taper. And before we go any further, we'll hit any random hairs that might be sticking out past the eye of the hook. Let's get those out of the way right away. All right, we'll build our cone head up front just a little bit because we still have to tie in our hackle. Little hackle collar. All right, we're going to go ahead and tie this in by the tip. I'm going to go ahead and fold these fibers back exposing my little tie-in point because so I don't want the longest fibers on the feather I want the shortest feathers and it will kind of go out the full length of the fly some might want to keep these a little bit shorter but I like it nice and full for our length 
All right, let's go ahead and take a couple of turns with this. We'll grab the tip of this or the base of this stem with our hackle pliers, help us keep it lined up. And as we tie this in, we're gonna do our best to keep these fibers folded towards the rear. Keep it pinched back, one, two, I think I'm going to do maybe one more turn. Looking kind of rough and scruff up front right now, but we will clean this up here in just a moment. A couple locking wraps. We can go ahead and trim off the stem. And we can gain control and clean this up a little bit up front. We're going to push these fibers down, let them kind of hold as a collar. And build our beautiful cone head up front. I like it. We set ourselves up for success. And we can come in with our final whip finish. One, two three turns. Draw that nice and tight and trim off our tie and thread. All right, last but not least, we have some Loon Hardhead Black. This really helps in case that beautiful head be created up front and this will give us a nice shiny finish. So I'm just going to take a little drop on the tip of my bodkin and use that to apply my head cement. We'll do that nice and even all the way around, just touching that and letting it flow into place. So there you have it folks, that is the sea trout fly inspired uh, from my little palette here, or plate, I'm calling this the furnace. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in, happy tying and tight lines.